Hi guys, it's me, Mr. Bertosh, your incredibly handsome, wonderful, and amazing science teacher. And in this video, we're going to be learning about mixtures. In the universe, there is a lot of stuff, a lot, a lot of stuff that you can touch and use and interact with. Uh, it's kind of like a big uh, video game where you're collecting stuff. No, actually, it's nothing like that. But there's a lot of stuff that you can uh, interact with and touch and use. And all of that stuff is organized and made out of other tinier stuff such as molecules and atoms and protons, neutrons, and electrons. So in another video, I talk about uh, atoms and elements. And then in another video besides that one, I talk about molecules and compounds. And in this video, we're going to talk about mixtures. However, I am going to review very quickly, very quickly, what uh, elements are and atoms and molecules and compounds because that lays a foundation for understanding mixtures. But I'm not going to go into very much detail. So if you want to really learn about atoms and molecules, you need to watch the other videos. Uh, so, but let's start from the beginning. Okay, everything in the universe is made out of, well, everything that's matter. Everything that matters, and that's made of matter, is made out of atoms. And atoms are made out of protons, neutrons, and electrons. An element is a substance that is made out of pure atoms. Okay, and for a much better uh, description, go watch the atoms video. But that's what an element is. I can mix elements together by combining the atoms chemically, and they form molecules. They come together, they're like, and they merge, and they change properties. They be, no longer act like independent atoms. They now act like a new substance. For example, water, H2O, is made out of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. And when they combine, they act totally different. They have new properties. Because hydrogen is a gas, and oxygen is a gas, but water, at room temperature anyway, is a liquid. So those are molecules, and a group of molecules is called a compound. A group of atoms is called an element, uh, as long as they're the same. And a group of molecules that are the same type of molecule are call is called a compound. A compound is made up of molecules, and element is made up of atoms. You with me? All right. So let's take it to the next level of complexity, because I can mix molecules together, uh, there, this is this step is a little bit different though because they're not actually combining the molecules aren't like and sticking together uh, instead they're just side by side they're sitting next to each other okay I mean they might be stuck together like in a rock they're physically stuck together but they're not chemically combined as a single molecule they're still just sitting side by side so when I have lots of molecules of different types that are all in the same substance together, we call that a mixture. One way that you can tell a mixture, uh, that something is a mixture, is that if you can separate the molecules physically through some sort of physical means, like a filter or evaporation or something. If I can separate the molecules out without having to do any chemical uh, you know, processes on them, without having to be a chemical ninja and slice them up with my chemical swords. That doesn't make any sense. But uh, then I know that they are mixtures. If they are combined into single molecules or compounds, but if they're separate molecules that can be physically divided, they are mixtures. And there are a lot of mixtures. In fact, you're a mixture. 
Okay, your body is a mixture because it's made up of all kinds of different uh, compounds, all kinds of different. You've got water in your body, right? And, uh, you know, a lot of other things that are in there doing the thing, uh, making you a living and breathing person. Um, but pretty much surrounding you in the universe, there are a lot of mixtures. If you drink, I like Diet Coke. My wife likes Diet Dr. Pepper because she's weird, but I like Diet Coke. And uh, Diet Coke is a mixture. It's got water. It's got carbon dioxide that's dissolved into the water. It's got sugar. Well, Diet Coke doesn't have sugar. It has like aspartame or something. Uh, it has coloring. It's probably terrible for me, but it hasn't affected my handsomeness. So that's all that really matters. But it, it's delicious. And it's a mixture. Those molecules don't combine. There is no Diet Coke molecule. That can is not full of Diet Coke molecules. It's full of water molecules and carbon dioxide and other kinds of molecules that are all just kind of there together. Okay. When I create a mixture, that mixture is either going to be homogenous or heterogeneous. Two big fancy sciencey words. Because, you know, scientists like to use big words to confuse everyone because that's fun. Um, instead of just speaking clearly. Homogenous means the same. The word, the prefix homo, H-O-M-O, means the same. Okay, homogenous. Heterogeneous, hetero means different. So if a mixture is homogenous, then you're going to remember in your head, okay, uh, the prefix homo means the same, so it must be mixed up all the same. Homogenous mixtures are all equally evenly mixed up, like Kool-Aid or Diet Coke. Okay, it's, it's mixed up. doesn't matter what, if I take a spoonful of, why would I drink Diet Coke that way? I don't know, but if I take a spoonful of Diet Coke out, of this part of the can or that part of the can, it's not going to matter. It's going to be exactly the same. That's homogenous. A heterogeneous mixture, however, is different. I might get a different flavor depending on where I take uh, my spoonful out of. And that might be, for example, a Oreo uh, blizzard or uh, shake okay, with Oreos in it because they don't mix them up very well. So all the Oreos end up on top. And you think this is delicious and you eat them and then you get halfway down and you're like, oh, there's no Oreos down here. I should have mixed this up better. That is heterogeneous where the Oreos are all in one place and the ice creams, vanilla ice creams at the bottom, lonely, without any Oreos. So if the mixture is evenly mixed up, it is homogenous. If it is not evenly mixed up, it is heterogeneous. Okay. Remember those two words. They're important. And now let's briefly talk about three different kinds of mixtures. And these three kinds of mixtures might be homogenous or they might be heterogeneous, just kind of depending on the type. Okay, the first is a solution. And not like a solution to the problem, although I am the solution to all problems. But uh, a solution is, generally speaking, a liquid and usually water which has another substance dissolved. That's an important word, dissolved into it. Okay, a solute is dissolved into the solution. And what happens is, even though it looks like, if you look at a glass of water, it looks like all the water molecules are touching each other. Actually, there's a little tiny gap between the molecules. And I can stick things in that gap. Uh, for example, salt. I can dissolve salt or sugar into water and it will fit. The salt molecules or the sugar molecules will fit in the little tiny gap between the water molecules. And because of that, when I drop salt into the water, it doesn't really change the volume. It will for a second, a minute before it dissolves, but that salt will dissolve. And then instead of sitting it as a pile on the bottom of the glass, it will actually be evenly dispersed in between the gaps of the water molecules. 
And so we say that it is homogeneous because they once it's done and dissolving, the uh, water, the salt and water are evenly spread out across the entire solution. Uh, and here's the deal. I can separate them again later. I can take them apart, rip them, destroy their association. Well, how am I going to, how, how can I physically remove the salt from the water? Uh, the, the evaporation really or boiling it. Okay. Uh, that's, but that's a physical process. That's not a chemical process. I can't, because there is no salt water molecule. There's water molecules, there's salt molecules, well, ions, and they're uh, stuffed into the gap between the water molecules. And so, yeah, that is a solution. The second type of mixture is a suspension. And this is basically a snow globe, okay? With a snow globe, if I shake up the snow globe, I go crazy and I shake it and I shake it and all the snow's flying everywhere. Well, eventually, when I stop shaking, what's going to happen to all the fake snow? It is going to settle at the bottom. Eventually, it's going to fall out of suspension and make a pile at the bottom. And that is what a suspension mixture is, where the particles don't stay mixed up because they're different densities. And so the snow sinks to the bottom no matter how many times I shake it up it reseparates out to the bottom. Oil and water do this. Oil and water don't like to mix. So when I put them together, uh, they separate out into different layers. Okay, that is a suspension. And it is heterogeneous because you have different things in different places. More water on the top, more snowflakes on the bottom, that would be heterogeneous. And then the last type of mixture we're going to talk about is a colloid. And a colloid is, uh, it kind of shares some properties of both, really. So in a colloid, the materials are evenly, they're, well, they're spread out through, throughout, they're not exactly perfectly evenly. They're, they're spread out throughout the mixture. And they don't settle because the mixture is too thick. It's like pudding or mayonnaise okay, or milk, actually if it's been homogenized, the uh, particles stay su suspended so they don't settle to the bottom, but uh, they're not spread out in a perfect pattern like they are with uh, solutions. So you might get five molecules of one thing and two molecules of another and four molecules and three, whereas with a solution, it's like every other molecule. Water salt, water salt, water salt, okay? But with mayonnaise, it's not exactly every other molecule. It's just kind of, you know, you mix it up as best you can. And then it stays mixed. And we say it's homogenous. It's not exactly homogenous. I mean, if I really, like, zoomed in, it wouldn't be perfectly homogenous. But overall, if I take a spoon of mayonnaise from this part of the jar or that part of the jar, I'm pretty much getting the same thing. So we call it homogenous. So that is what a mixture is. It's the final level of organization of matter. I go from atoms or, and elements, and then I combine the atoms into molecules, and I call that a compound. And then I can combine compounds into mixtures and create amazingly beautiful, handsome people like me. Hi guys, thanks for watching my video. These rambling science videos where I go unscripted and just kind of barf up all the science knowledge out of my head are part of a series that go along with an online class that I teach, which you can sign up for if you go to handsomescienceteacher.com. I also have a whole bunch of free resources for homeschoolers. I have uh, hundreds of articles on every topic that uh, covers your entire science curriculum from fifth through eighth grade. I have online games and quizzes, all curated and written by uh, this handsome guy, uh, a science teacher with, well, three, three degrees, but two of them are in science. So it's uh, targeted right to and directly to your uh, 
your science student. So sign up. Subscribe to the channel, and I release lots of videos. Also, in addition to these ones, lots of little uh, short videos that are like two minutes long that cover science topics. Those ones you don't get to see my handsome face, but they're still good videos, and they're much more targeted, and those ones are scripted, so you don't have to hear me like you are right now going blah, blah, blah. The end. Uh, subscribe. Thank you. Goodbye.